we'll get back to the problem. And again, this is just a very simple geometric problem. Uh, in this case, we have a plane parallel model set up, and this is just a, a parallel plate capacitor, if you will. In this case, we have the two different edges. We have the ground at the bottom, high voltage at the top. And then we have two different dielectrics in this case. We have polyethylene in the, in the larger um, chunk or slab, if you will, and air in this uh, smaller thickness. And so uh, the, the dielectric constant of the polyethylene is obviously higher than the air by roughly a factor of two. The thickness in this case, I think, is about eight millimeters for the, the polyethylene and about two millimeters for the air. And again, we can we can solve it. Then go ahead and look at the results. And you can see that that the fields are higher in the air gap. The they have essentially been pushed into the lower dielectric area. And, and have decreased in the solid dielectric with a higher uh, dielectric constant and are now higher than the average would be uh, across a full gap in the air gap. And again, this has implications, especially if the fields in the air gap here, again, get high enough to exceed the, uh, the corona onset or breakdown voltage of air, you can start to have a, a a corona or a plasma discharge here. Ultraviolet light can be uh, created there and, and heat also and those can cause uh, problems with the insulation material and, and cause it to decompose and you'll start to lose essentially the insulation across the full gap and that can eventually lead to, to a complete failure uh, across the full gap there. So again um, the implication is that uh, you can't simply take a piece of uh, plastic or insulation material and, and stick it between two electrodes and expect it to uh, completely solve the issue. You have to look at the at the problem in total and uh, exactly what's happening there. So again, I'm going to go ahead and again close this down and look at another problem. And this is a little bit more of a, uh, a real-world example of, uh, of a part you might expect to see in real life. This is a, a, a dielectric uh, insulator standoff. Uh, the high voltage now is on the right side, the ground plane on the left side. And you can see there's a this is a threaded insert in the part itself, and you can see it's not strictly cylindrical shaped. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's some radiusing on the end there, and it's tapered as it goes down and in, into the part. And that's done specifically to try and help with the fields in, inside the plastic itself. So there you can see the epoxy. This is air on the outside. We can go ahead and just go straight to the results in this case. I've solved this before. So you can see the highest fields are, are at the edge of this insert uh, inside the part. And again, and they're, they're up towards the three megavolts per meter, which is within the, the capabilities of the material itself. The fields out in the air are not too bad. Um, so that's, again, just an example of a real world part. Now, if we take those two examples that we just looked at and uh, essentially combine them into a, a new problem, Now I have the same standoff, although in this case I've created a number of different little voids inside the part itself. So now not only do I have the 
the air on the outside of the part. I've also used that to, to, to define the material it's in it. The material basically inside these voids I've defined as air. So this could also be uh, essentially a vacuum or uh, or some partial atmosphere. So again, I've already solved this, so we can go straight to the results. And you can see the fields are, are a little bit higher now, even at the edge of the insert. But what we also want to look at is what's happening inside these little voids or areas within the solid dielectric. And you can see they're at a higher field strength than the surrounding areas. So again, it's a case where the fields have been pushed into the, the area that has the lower dielectric. And you can see several of these. We can go back again and change the, uh, the scaling. So you can see there are at least a couple. There's one. And there's another one down at the other end. This one right here is just beginning to show issues. But this one down here is definitely up above the 3 megavolts per meter field strength. And so if that's strictly air at atmospheric pressure inside this void, that's going to start seeing uh, onset of corona or partial or even full discharge. And again, that can lead to eventual failure across this void, and you can end up with a, essentially a chain reaction as, as the part begins to fail through all these little voids in the material. So again, it has implications um, in real-world applications. If I was to go out and try and build this myself, I would need to ensure myself that the, the raw material uh, was free of voids and, and didn't have this potential for problems before I started to make this part. Um, I can show you, here's a commercial version of uh, a similar standoff. And a lot of times these are cast, and what they'll do is cast it in a, in a vacuum to ensure that all the bubbles and the voids are therefore eliminated from the part. So again, just uh, uh, trying to give you a, a real-world example of how uh, quick field can be used to uh, analyze problems.